Hello students, welcome back to our class. In the previous module, we discussed about types of quadrilaterals. In that, we discussed about a trapezium as well as a parallelogram. And once again, we recollect what is the definition of a parallelogram as well as the properties. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, right? If both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it is said to be a parallelogram. And uh, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal, opposite angles also equal and both the diagonals bisect each other, but we cannot say whether both the diagonals are equal or not in length. They are the properties of parallelogram and coming to the next quadrilateral, I would write here what are the quadrilaterals. The first one is trapezium that we already discussed, right? So trapezium and the second one is a parallelogram. second one is a parallelogram. Now coming to the third quadrilateral that is a modified parallelogram. So how do you say that it is a modified parallelogram? In addition to the properties of parallelogram, if we give some other additional properties, then there is another quadrilateral will be formed. So what are the additional properties? See, I am taking one parallelogram here. This is one parallelogram. In this parallelogram, let us name this parallelogram as suppose A, B, C, D. In this parallelogram, you know that A, B is parallel to C, D and A, D is parallel to B, C. So what am I going to do here? I am going to short, make short or make longer the sides here. The sides are nothing but you know about the properties of parallelogram that AB and CD both are equal, AD and BC both are equal, but AB and BC both are not equal, right? In a parallelogram, that's the properties of parallelogram. But what am I going to do here? I am going to do one thing that I am making the sides one pair of adjacent sides are equal. One pair of adjacent sides are equal means, for example, the length of AB is equal to some 5 centimeters. So, this is also 5 centimeters and the length of BC is equal to some 4 centimeters. That is why this is also 4 centimeters. For example, what am I going to do here? I am going to take only 4 centimeters on DC, only 4 centimeters. So, if I take only 4 centimeters on DC, for example, this is the point where that 4 centimeters 4 centimeters comes, this is for example P and simultaneously I will take 4 centimeters on AB also, let this point be C such that AQ is equal to 4 centimeters and DP is also is equal to 4 centimeters. Then what am I, what am I going to do? I am going to join both P and Q, right? So there is a special quadrilateral formed. What is that special quadrilateral? AQPD. Basically, it is a parallelogram because both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel and what about the adjacent sides here? Since it is 4 centimeters, this one also became 4 centimeters, right? Because it was already 4 centimeters. So, 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters and both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Then the quadrilateral so obtained is said to be a rhombus. What do you call that quadrilateral? It is said to be a rhombus. So, what do you mean by a rhombus? A rhombus is a quadrilateral in which all the four sides are equal. That is what the basic definition everybody knows. But in fact, a quadrilateral is formed from a parallelogram. So, that we can define a quadrilateral. What is that quadrilateral rhombus? We can define a rhombus in such a way that a parallelogram in which one pair of adjacent sides are equal, a parallelogram in which one pair of adjacent sides are equal is said to be a rhombus. That is what the exact definition of a rhombus. I repeat, a rhombus is basically a parallelogram. So that in a parallelogram, if one pair of adjacent sides are equal, then it is said to be a rhombus. And what are all the properties of parallelogram definitely satisfied by this rhombus? And what are the additional properties here? 
the additional properties of rhombus are all the four sides are equal, all the four sides are equal and coming to coming to the diagonals, coming to the diagonals. In fact, in parallelogram diagonals may not be equal. So, similarly in rhombus also diagonals may not be equal. Now, I am going to draw one rhombus here, so that uh, you can understand. Generally, we draw rhombus as a diamond shaped quadrilateral, let it be a rhombus. Okay. For example, this is A, B, C, D in which all the four sides are equal, that is why just now we discussed since it is a rhombus, a modified parallelogram, all the four sides are equal. This is one of the diagonals and this is the other diagonal, these two are two diagonals and once observe the diagonals, the intersection point of both the diagonals is equal to O. Since it is already a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. What does it mean? This part is equal to this part and this part is equal to this part, right. Once observe this triangle and this triangle, what do you call these two triangles? First triangle and second triangle. Can we call those two triangles as congruent triangles? Obviously, by this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side and this side equal to this side. So, by S, S, S congruence, these two triangles are congruent. If two triangles are congruent by C, P, C, T, this angle is equal to this angle, correct? And uh, this angle is equal to this angle, correct? These two angles also equal. If these two angles are equal, let this angle be x and this angle is also x. Angle D, O, B, angle D, O, B is a straight angle, right? Which is equal to 180 degrees. Angle D O B is divided into two equal angles x plus x. So, x plus x is equal to 180 degrees. If x plus x equal to 180, then 2 x is equal to 180. 2 into how much equal to 180? 2 into 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So, what does it mean here? Each angle is equal to 90 degrees. So, here we understand one thing that the angle between the diagonals of a rhombus is 90 degrees, that is very, very important property regarding diagonals of a rhombus. Already in rhombus, diagonals bisect each other. Now, we proved that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So, if you combine both these statements, you can take out, you can define one more property of the quadrilateral of a rhombus, that is the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other perpendicularly. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other perpendicularly. So, it means the diagonals are right bisectors. The diagonals are right bisectors in a rhombus. That is very, very important property of rhombus as per the diagonals. Okay? And when one more very important property here is, see these two angles are equal. And similarly, if you prove these two triangles are congruent, then this part is equal to this part, right? So, what do you mean by this? This is the diagonal BD dividing this entire D into two parts, into two parts. But if you can say first, second, third, fourth, this is the fourth quadrilateral, first sorry, fourth triangle, first triangle and fourth triangle both are congruent. Again, since these two triangles are congruent, by C, P, C, D, you can say that these two angles also equal. If these two angles are equal and similarly these two angles also equal. So, what does it mean? It means diagonal divides the angle into two equal parts. Then what do you call that line? It must be a angular bisector. So, that diagonals divides the angles into two equal parts means diagonals are the angular bisectors also. These are all very important properties of our rhombus. So, if we compile all these properties, let us start from the definition of the rhombus. What is the definition of rhombus? According to the properties of whatever all we discussed and we already discussed the definition which is not something different which is a modified parallelogram. right? So, 
what is the definition of our rhombus? A rhombus is a parallelogram in which one pair of adjacent sides are equal. If one pair of adjacent sides are equal in a parallelogram, then it is said to be a rhombus. It means all the four sides are equal. And what is the first property of our rhombus? All the four sides are equal, that is the first property. And what is the second property? Second property uh, regarding the diagonals, diagonals right bisectors, diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly, that is very important property of our rhombus. And what is third property? Third property is the diagonals are also the angular bisectors, that is the third property of rhombus. So, these are about the properties of rhombus and rhombus is a modified parallelogram, please do remember that it is not something else. And what are all the properties of parallelogram will be satisfied by our rhombus because rhombus is a modified parallelogram. But rhombus has some additional properties that parallelogram does not have, okay? that is about third quadrilateral. And coming to the fourth quadrilateral, again fourth quadrilateral is also a modified parallelogram. Let us consider a parallelogram, okay. So, this is a parallelogram in which let it be A, B, C, D, opposite sides are parallel as well as equal as we already know that, okay. So, what am I going to do here? I am doing one thing, see in parallelogram you cannot say one of the angles is 90 degrees, but what am I going to do here? I am going to make one of the angles 90 degrees. For that what should I do? I will have to pull that side AD towards left hand side to make this angle D is equal to 90. Did you get my point? I am, I am making, I am pulling this side AB towards my left to make this angle D is equal to 90. So, wh what am I going to do here? I am going to make this 90 degrees. So, in order to make this angle 90 degrees, then this AB is connected with this AD only, no? so that this AB will also move towards left. When AB is moving towards left, then BC also move towards left. So, when it move towards left, then it will become all the four angles will be 90 degrees. Got it? So, in fact, technically what did I do here? I have taken one parallelogram and I made one of the angles of a parallelogram is 90 degrees, that is it, nothing more than that I, do, I did. Okay? So, if one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, then it is said to be a rectangle. Did you understand what my definition for a rectangle is? A rectangle is a quadrilateral and it is modified parallelogram. So, what is that modification has done? That modification is in, I will write here, in a parallelogram, in a parallelogram, if one angle, if one angle is a right angle, if one angle is a right angle, then it is a rectangle. One angle is right angle, then it is a rectangle. This is what the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle is a modified parallelogram, but what is the difference between a parallelogram and rectangle? One angle of a parallelogram is right angle. If one angle is right angle, what about the other angles? Other angles automatically 90 degrees only. right? So, all the four angles of a rectangle are right angles all four angles are right angles and all uh, like opposite sides are equal and uh, there is an additional property for this rectangle if I take one rectangle. So, this is one rectangle for example, let us name this rectangle as A, B, C, D. Okay? This is one diagonal and this is one more diagonal. Okay? Since it is also a parallelogram, so that diagonals bisect each other but not perpendicularly. Diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly only in rhombus so far, okay? but here you cannot say that this angle is equal to 90 degrees. But if you observe AC as well as BD, you can prove that this triangle ABC 
as well as triangle ADC. Both the two triangles are congruent by RHS congruence, right? Or SAS congruence also because all the four angles are equal. By that, we can understand one thing that AC and BD both are equal. It means diagonals are equal in a rectangle. Diagonals are equal in a rectangle. This is only the additional property of rectangle. And moreover, of course, by the definition of the rectangle, each angle is equal to 90 degrees and the diagonals are equal, but the diagonals are not right bisectors. Diagonals just bisect each other. And the diagonals are not angular bisectors also here. You understand? Right. So, coming to this is what you call as a rectangle. This is a fourth quadrilateral. Okay. So, till now we discussed about a trapezium, parallelogram, rhombus and the fourth one is a rectangle. Coming to the next quadrilateral, that next quadrilateral is also a modified parallelogram. That modified parallelogram that I am taking it as a rhombus. Suppose if in a rhombus, suppose I am taking one rhombus here. So, in this rhombus, all four sides are equal, of course. What am I going to do here? I am going to do just like what I did for a parallelogram to B, it is a rectangle. I made one of the angles is 90 degrees. Here also, I am what I am doing, going to do here is I am going to make one angle is right angle in a rhombus. So, if I make one angle is right angle, then what will happen? And then this side also will come towards left. So, there is a special quadrilateral formed. Basically, it was A, B, C, D rhombus. Let this point is P and this point is Q. Now, there is a special quadrilateral formed that is A, B, Q, P. That A, B, Q, P, what did I do here? I did make one angle is equal to 90 degrees. So, in a rhombus, if one angle is equal to 90 degrees, then that rhombus is said to be a square. Rhombus is said to be a square. It is a very prominent quadrilateral because all the properties will be satisfied in this quadrilateral. What are all the properties of rhombus will be satisfied by this quadrilateral? And what are the additional properties of the square? Each angle is equal to 90 degrees. And in rhombus, diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. In square also diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. But coming to one additional property of this square is in a square if you consider all the four sides are equal and what about the diagonals coming to the diagonal since each right each angle is equal to right angle like in rectangle both the diagonals are equal. So, both the diagonals are equal and since in rhombus diagonals right bisectors. So, here also diagonals right bisectors and in rhombus diagonal is angular bisector. So, here also diagonal diagonals are angular bisectors. So, in fact, you can say one thing that a square is the combination of a rectangle as well as a rhombus as simple as that. Understand? So, here every property will be satisfied. What are all the properties of a square? and what are all the properties of rhombus, what are all the properties of uh, rectangle will be in one quadrilateral that is a square as simple as that, right. And coming to the next quadrilateral, what is the next quadrilateral that is very important and interesting quadrilateral we see every single uh, like in our day to day life during festivals, right. So, that quadrilateral here is see these two are one pair of adjacent sides are equal and uh, these two are another pair of adjacent sides which are also equal. How it is looking like? It is looking like a kite. Yes, the name of this quadrilateral is also a kite. So, how do you define a kite? So, kite is a special quadrilateral. In this quadrilateral we have for example, A, B, C, D is a kite is a quadrilateral in which A, D is equal to A, B or A, B is equal to A, D and BC is equal to DC. We cannot say that adjacent sides, pair of adjacent sides are equal because these are adjacent sides, these two are not equal. That is why you can define with the help of the figure only, right. So, AB is equal to AD and BC is equal to DC, right. Coming to the diagonals, properties of diagonals, this is one diagonal and this is the other diagonal. See here, 
in this particular quadrilateral called kite, this part is equal to this part only, but you cannot say that AO is equal to OC. It means in kite, one diagonal bisects the other diagonal perpendicularly. We cannot say that diagonals are right bisectors here as like rhombus. In rhombus, both the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly, but in the case of kite, we cannot say that diagonals are right bisectors. Here we precisely say one thing that one diagonal, the longer diagonal bisects the smaller diagonal perpendicularly. It means DO is equal to OB and angle AOB is equal to 90 degrees. So, this is about a kite and the properties of kite. And coming to the last quadrilateral, this is a modified trapezium. So, the modified trapezium, we already discussed about isosceles triangle, have you remembered? So, when a triangle is said to be isosceles triangle, if two sides of a triangle are equal, then the triangle is said to be isosceles triangle. We already discussed about a trapezium. So, in a trapezium, one pair of opposite sides are obviously parallel, but we do not know about the other pair of opposite sides, right? So, here these two are one pair of opposite sides, both are parallel and here C, B, C as well as A, D, B, C and A, D both are non-parallel sides. Here non-parallel sides, if non-parallel sides are equal, then this trapezium is said to be an isosceles trapezium. So, what do you mean by isosceles trapezium? A trapezium in which non-parallel sides are equal, then the trapezium is said to be an isosceles trapezium. This is the special quadrilateral which is isosceles trapezium. So, isosceles trapezium means a trapezium in which both non-parallel sides are equal, then it is said to be isosceles trapezium. So, it means AD is equal to BC and of course, AB is parallel to CD. But there are some important properties of this isosceles trapezium. Those important properties are, see here, this is angle A and this is angle B. These two angles are equal. Of course, we are going to prove how they are equal. So, angle A is equal to angle B and angle A is equal to angle B as well as angle C is equal to angle D means this angle is equal to this angle. Obviously, this is one diagonal and this is the another diagonal, but both the diagonals are equal. What is that? Both the diagonals are equal. It means AC is equal to BD. We are going to prove all these things in the upcoming class. Um, this is about isosceles trapezium. So, till now we discussed about different types of quadrilaterals. So, what are all those different types of quadrilaterals? The very first quadrilateral is a trapezium and second one is a parallelogram and the third one is a rhombus, fourth one is a rectangle, fifth one is a square, sixth one is a kite, seventh one is isosceles trapezium. Hope you understand the definitions and all types of quadrilaterals. Hope you enjoyed the class. Thank you.